How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video I'm going to show you step by step how to install the Brother TD4550 DNWB thermal printer, also known as the TD4D. Uh, we're gonna hook it up to our network and then I'm gonna show you how to print from an iPad or from a Macintosh computer. But if you're printing from an iPad, it's kind of like the same as an iPhone. So technically it's like iPads and iPhones and Macintosh computers wirelessly on this guy. And at any time during the video, if you wanna skip ahead, go to the description. There's an index and you can skip to a different part of the video if you wanna see something specific to save you some time. I do have a video unboxing that printer. I'll put a link to it in the corner if you are interested. And if you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. And let's get into the tutorial. So here is our printer. First thing we're going to need to do is set it up and calibrate it, get our media loaded into the printer. And when I say media, I don't mean CDs, DVDs, and games. I mean labels. They call this media in printer world. So media. We have a nice screen here that we're going to be navigating through menus with all these buttons up here. Power, feed, menu, back menu, up, down, okay. All these are ne menu navigation buttons. So we're gonna plug it in. You're gonna take your power supply, plug in your power cable. This is plugged into the wall right now. Plug that into your power supply. Plug your power supply into the back of your printer and you're going to turn your printer on. It does like a little blink thing. We're gonna turn it on, hold that power button and it will initialize. And the first thing it's going to ask us is for our set language. So put it in whatever language you want. We're using English here in the United States. So we're gonna hit okay. And now the printer is in ready status, except for there is no media, there is no label. So we're going to press these little levers right here, open it up, and we're going to load some media. I'm gonna show you two different label sizes and how to calibrate it, and then what else you can kind of do with the media. Um, I have right here, this is a three inch core, which I got for free from ups.com. Normally it's a lot thicker, but this is low enough to where I can just set this in here and then I can close the top of the printer. You also can, you also can feed fan folded labels through the back right here. That would look something like this, this on a spool, or you could just have the fan fold labels in a box. You would feed it through the back, kind of like that. Uh, then you would use this wheel here to open it to the width of your labels, something like that. And then you would be able to feed the labels through the back of the printer that way. I like to have my labels inside my printer, so I'm just going to put these in like that and close the top. So anytime you open or close it, it'll go to this media menu. If you don't do anything, it'll time out and just go back to ready status. But if you hit okay and then press down to calibration and then hit okay, it's going to calibrate the printer automatically. It's going to use these sensors in here, read in between the labels with some infrared or whatever to read the distance between the labels and to figure out your label size. So I'm gonna hit okay on calibration. So we are on media calibration, I'm gonna hit okay. And the printer spits out two labels and then it says four by six die cut labels. It already knows what we have. Then I can open this up, roll it back, and then it's gonna say media again, but it already has calibrated for four by six, so we're good to go. If at any time you change labels, like we're going to do right here, you always wanna make sure the label surface is facing up because the thermal print head is on the top of the printer. So these labels that I have right here, I actually have to install them like this. Close this thing with the wheel, kind of like that. And then I can close the top here. It's gonna ask me to calibrate again. Then I have to go down to calibration, hit okay, and spit out three labels. And it says they're two and a half by one inch die cut labels. If I hit the feed button, it'll feed one label just like that, and it is calibrated for this. And for this tutorial, we're actually gonna be using shipping labels. That's what most people are gonna be using, but I did wanna show you anytime you change label size, how you calibrate, and it's just that easy. Now that your media is loaded, your labels are loaded, your printer is calibrated, 
you're going to want to get it on your wireless network. I'm gonna show you three ways how to do it. First is using WPS push button, that's the easiest. Second is we're going to find our wireless network using our screen here, type in our password manually and get it to connect to the wireless. And third, if all else fails, can plug in an ethernet cord in the back and then plug the other end of it into your wireless router and you can network your printer that way, but you have to have it close to the router. So it's technically not wireless, but it is networked. So first we're gonna do WPS push button, which is the easiest way to do it. You're gonna hit menu here. We're going to navigate with these down arrow key down to WLAN. It's the menu six out of eight. We're gonna hit okay. You're going to go to WLAN on off. We're gonna turn it on because it defaults to off. And then we're gonna go back to WLAN. I'm gonna hit okay. Then we're gonna go down to WPS push button. I'm gonna hit okay. Uh, I'm gonna press up to get to start. And then I'm going to hit okay. Start WPS on your wireless router slash access point. I'm gonna hit okay. And it says setting up WPS right there. So while that's looking for an open WPS, we're gonna go to our router and your router must have a WPS button for this. I have one right here. I'm going to hold that down until my light in the front starts blinking. This light is blinking. Your router might have a WPS LED. It might have something a little bit different than what I have, but for the reference of this video, I am using an Asus RTAC 68U router. Okay, so we have a connected exclamation point. Setting this on WPS and then allowing WPS on our router has connected them without having to type anything in. And as you can see, if we go back to the menu, we have a wireless signal right there and we are on our network. If for some reason WPS doesn't work for you, you can try the second method that I'm about to show you. The second way to connect this to your Wi-Fi router, we're gonna hit menu. We're gonna go down to y, uh, WLAN. We're gonna hit okay. You're gonna wanna make sure your WLAN is on. Then you're gonna hit okay to select WLAN again. You're gonna use the down navigation to navigate down to infra manual setup. I think infrastructure manual setup, you're gonna hit okay. And now the printer is searching for wireless networks around it. Now that might take 10 to 20 seconds for it to find all the networks. Okay. So now it's got a list of SSIDs, which are the networks that it's picking up. And you have to scroll up or down to find your wireless network. You may have two wireless networks and I would recommend getting on the 5G one if you can if you have a 5G network at your house. So we're gonna get on ours, it's Spearsy Town 5G, and then I'm gonna hit okay. And here it's asking me to input the password. This is kind of a pain in the butt. This menu button toggles capital, lowercase, numbers and signs, and then you use up and down to input each character. My password is year of the pig. So I will put that in right now. Every character you're gonna input it using up and down and menu to change between capital, lowercase, numbers, and signs. And then each character you're gonna to have to hit okay and then go to the next character. And it is a pain, but it must be done if your WPS is not working. So bear with me while I put this in. Okay, I put it all the way in. It doesn't fit all on the screen and then I'm going to hit okay to finish. It says my password is year of the pig right there. I'm gonna hit okay one more time and that let the printer know what network it needs to connect to and what the password for that network is so it can connect. It said connected, now we have our wireless signal right there and our printer is on our network. Third way, if neither of those wireless ways work, you're going to want to take an ethernet cable plug it into the back of your printer, plug the other end into an open port on your router, and your router should have a light on whatever port you plugged it into. See how that says port four is blinking, data is transmitting. I plugged it into port four, we're connected, and the printer should be found from the iPad. 
Now that the printer is on the network, we're going to go to the iPad. You're gonna wanna make sure you're on the same network as your printer, same home network. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. We're on fulfilledmerchant.com. I have a four by six sample label here to print. It's free. I will put a link to this in the description. You just click download, brings you to a sample label, and then you go up here. There's a square with an up arrow. Press that, scroll down to print, and then you go to printer. You should have the brother TD4550 DNWB pop up. That's what you pick. Everything looks good. You're going to hit print. It's gonna send the signal to the printer and it's going to print you a beautiful four by six shipping label. You're gonna have to change settings on whatever app you're using, if it's Poshmark or eBay. I do have a video specifically showing you how to change settings to four by six because the apps default to eight and a half by 11, so you're not gonna be getting these beautiful four by six labels until you change those settings. You wanna check out that video. I'll put a link to that in the corner and in the description as well. It shows you specifically how to change it in each platform. I don't have a video for Shopify, but there is a setting in Shopify as well. So now that we know how to print using an iPad, I'm gonna show you how to install the printer on a Mac. Okay, so here we are on the MacBook, and we're going to go to this little finder up here and type in printer and scanners and go to this top hit printers and scanners. Double click on that. It brings up your printers and scanners settings. We're gonna hit the plus button right here. Ignore all these printers. These are other printers I have installed on this computer. We're gonna hit this plus button. And as you can see, the printer is popping up. You wanna make sure you are on the same network that you connected your printer to, and it should pop up like that. You're gonna highlight it, and down here it's going to go to use air print. You're gonna hit add. And just like that, your printer is installed. We're going to go to fulfilledmerchant.com. I have a link to this in the description where we're going to print a sample label. We're going to, we're going to click on this download right here. It's going to open up a new page. I'm going to hit Command P, and that brings up this print dialog, and you're going to want to make sure to, pr to pick that brother TD printer. Everything looks good, and, and we're going to hit print. And there we are, our printer printed this label wirelessly. It was super easy to install on our MacBook Pro. Uh, before we go, I wanna show you one more way to connect to this printer without a network. There's a thing called Direct Connect and I'm gonna show you how to do it back on the iPad. Last but not least, I'm gonna show you how to direct connect to your brother printer with an iPad or an iPhone. So you would use this method in a situation where you don't have a network and you need to just connect to the printer to print a label from your phone, which is using cell towers to get the shipping label, but you just have to send it to the printer somehow. First of all, we're gonna have to go to our printer. We're gonna hit menu. We're gonna scroll down to WLAN, hit okay. Scroll down to direct manual setup, then hit okay. It's gonna turn the wireless connection on automatically, and then it's gonna give you this SSID. You're gonna hit okay, and then it tells you what the name of the SSID is. It's direct, and then some numbers that have to do with your serial number, TD4550DNWB. Then you're gonna hit okay. It's gonna give you the password. We're gonna go to our Apple device, go to your settings. We go here and we can see networks that are being picked up by the iPad and we're going to find direct 79485DNWB. We're gonna click on that. The password is on here, 45579485. So we're gonna type that in, 45579485. And the way that they made, and the way that that password's generated, if you look at the SSID, it's 79485. That's actually part of our uh, serial number down here, 79485. It's the last five digits. And then the 455 are the first three digits of this model number. You're just gonna hit okay, hit okay on the printer. It's gonna ask you for channel, you're just gonna hit okay, and then join. And that directly connects 
from the iPad or the iPhone to the printer via the Wi-Fi signal that the printer itself is emitting. Now, we're going to open up whatever label that you're printing in a 4x6 format through an app or through a browser. You're gonna go to the square arrow up at the top, hit print, printer should pop up. You click on it, you hit print, it should send a signal to the printer. Well, I gotta hit okay one more time on the printer. There we go. I had to get out of that menu, so you had to get back to just the regular menu screen and then now the printer can receive the signal. We'll hit it again. Print, print, and it'll send it to the printer. But that is how you set this printer up with routers, with iPads, iPhones, with, with MacBooks, direct Wi-Fi. The same direct Wi-Fi method could be used on a MacBook if needed. But I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about this printer, put them in the comment section. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.